mistake. Just how does it get to that level? How do you know he wasn't though? Or yeah, I, I mean, yeah, wasn't. we don't know. But I just can't even. To quote a phrase, I just can't even. I mean, nine hundred. Damn, that's, nine complaints is too many. She said <laughs> over eleven hundred received in FY twenty twenty. Yep. Through December. And I mean, I just can't even because every election, what is it you hear? Oh, the children, oh, the children. And this is, I mean, <laughs> hmm. that's 806, uh, Thursday, February 11th. Uh, just want to go over some of the praise uh, that has uh, come out um, in advance of the release of uh, Julian Uggen's uh, book, The Properties of Perpetual Light. A powerful, beautiful book. It's fierce love of the land, the ocean, the elders and the ancestors, warms the heart, and moves the spirit. That uh, bit of praise, I don't know if you guys know Alice Walker, color of purple, but yeah, she, that's that's heavy. That's uh, pretty. <laughs> that, no, that, that really is, in the literary community, that's praise yeah. from Caesar right there. Yeah. I, I would be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> How? <laughs> I bet Julian was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Is that a direct yeah, quote? I, yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was. Um, so, only, Sabrina Salas says I about this book, OMG, <laughs> OMG, OMG. <laughs> uh, we also, there's another one here, a breathtaking book, and I mean it. This book took my breath away. The Properties of Perpetual Light is so alive with passion, wisdom, and heart. You can almost feel its pulse, a call not only for justice, but for a brand new covenant with our world. That from Janot Diaz, the author of A Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow, Wow. A Pulitzer Prize winner. Uh, for fiction and then uh, we have naomi klein who wrote the shock doctrine and this changes everything uh she writes i did not know i needed this book until it had me in its embrace like the oldest and dearest of friends from the very first page overflowing with warmth and wisdom and defying all categorization the properties of perpetual light is philosophy poetry memoir history and self-help for humanity with bottomless love uh, for his people in place Ugin, guides us through a portal to the Pacific, sharing deep insights earned from life on the existential knife's edge. He wow. <laughs> Way to go, Julian. <laughs> wow. You know, I, Chris, I, I just want to say, as, <laughs> as someone who grew up reading, I thought the best the best praise was when Clive Barker wrote, you know, like his scary <laughs> books, and it, said, and, and it said, I've seen the future of horror, and it's Clive Barker from Stephen King. Right, yeah. That blows that away. Yeah, Julian, yeah. well deserved, bro. Let me just add my own review. Thank it's cherry. Know. It's yeah. cherry. <laughs> Okay. It would be Chris Barnett says this book is badass. It's scary. <laughs> All right. Um, Julian, I know that you're going to read a selection from the book, but I, I want to say that it does defy all categorization. And I was kind of thumbing through the advanced copy. Thank you. Um, last night. And it's a bit of prose. It's a bit of um, free form expression. Uh, there's some essays. There's definitely some poetry in here. Uh, so let's kind of start there, right? Um, I think when a lot of people sit down and they, and I don't know if you had this like Eureka where I want to write a book, but you know, usually when people sit down and they want to write a book, it's like they're writing a book, but this is, it, it's more of a collection, I think of, um, I mean, it's an anthology, but it, you know, usually anthologies are from different writers and this is like an anthology of your stuff. So was that kind of what you wanted to do when, when you, um, went in on this? Actually, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, all of you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I actually had no idea what I wanted out of it. I had no <laughs> sort of preconceived notion of what I was doing. All I know is 2020 was hard as hell, you know, for me and for everybody else, you know? And I, I just felt like, and I also felt a lot of rage about like a variety of issues happening in Guam. And I was like, wow. I need to put this rage somewhere, <laughs> you know, I, you know, so that's what it started. It started from just like an expression of love and rage. And I realized the more I wrote, I wrote about things I never intended to write about ever. Like I have never written about my father's death, you know, and I, I didn't know that I would ever do that. And for some reason, something about last year, there was just so much loss, you know, and I was like, man, we, we have experienced so many different kinds of loss here, you know, and so I, and I always, you know, I also sort of remembered something that, um, you know, um, that um, like this insight from feminism that the personal is political, you know, like, like what, what about your own life? You know, what, 
can you pull from your own life, you know, to try to like share with others, to try to get through this, whatever this is, you know, this collective sense of mourning, this collective loss that we've experienced, you know? And so I just started writing about all these experiences I've had to, you know, since, you know, since losing my father at nine years old, um, to working for Mother Teresa as a very young teenager, not knowing what the hell I was doing in India, working for her, like, like not knowing anything. And, you know, and then also meeting famous authors in bookstores and trying to talk to them, but being so shy, you know, being a young teenager, you know, you reach for your words and they're not there. When you're really young and you don't really know, you're struggling with self-identity and everything, you reach for language, you know, and sometimes it's just not there. And so I kind of wanted to write, and then I realized what I was doing. So like halfway through, I was like, oh, I think I'm writing a book for young people, for young people who, you know, who are trying to reach for language to graft themselves onto the world, you know, but they can't find it, you know, and sort of, and, you know, in the process of that. So it's almost like an homage to the work that, you know, writer activists do, you know, the work of bearing witness. I wanted so to, that's what, yeah. I, I don't know uh, which uh, piece you were going to read, but I was kind of looking over this, um, one here, uh, Julian, uh, Dugo means yoke. And there's a piece here, it kind of reminded me of uh, something. Uh, you're talking about the death of your father in this one, right? And uh, it reads, I, my sister, we all bore that heaviness, my sister most of all. I know this because once when I was 10 and she was 11, I found her outside in the middle of the night wearing nothing but my dad's old shirt, which she had washed one too many times and which she said no longer smelled like him. Though it had been only one year since he died, I was beginning to be able to read the signs. I could see the emptiness in her eyes. I changed my prayer right then and there. I prayed for her wings, not mine. I mean, deep stuff kind of sounds like a cliche, you know. But but this really reminded me of, of after high school, I went off to uh, the States. Just to, you know, I don't know what I was doing, but my mom had um, asked me to wear a shirt and then when I left, she took that shirt and she like never washed it for the whole time I was gone. So it kind of like struck a chord to me, but there's just so much in here, man, from the personal to the political. And, um, it just really covers all the bases, a tremendous uh, piece of work. You know, I, I didn't get the, the digital copy, but oh. I do know, um, <laughs> that, that was, that was very subtle, by the but way. I, I, mean. I, I do know though, you know, it's, it's gotta be really good because hmm. I remember when you gave your, uh, your speech at the University of Guam graduation. I don't mm. think there was a dry eye uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. in the room or for anybody watching it online. Um, so I really can't wait to read it. And so just based on the feedback and the reviews that you've gotten, I mean, how, how does it make you feel? I mean, you've got all of this that was in your head and you put it out and you're getting ready to put it out into the universe. That's a great question. Um, you know, you feel very vulnerable, you know, like I actually returned to such a vulnerable place in my life. That essay that Chris wrote, actually, I didn't even really realize I had a book here until I wrote that essay. I mean, that's to me like that essay, Zuku means yo, you know, I'm even talking about the root word, you know, where Jigo comes from, right. heaviness, you know, this as in to carry a burden or, you know, or to bear a heaviness. And I wrote about that and I was like, yeah, so I didn't know, you know, I had a book until I wrote that. And then I was like, I just kept getting more and more sort of personal. I was like, I'm going to try to do what Toni Morrison, you know, the great black writer. She said, our lives are already artful. They're just waiting for us to turn them into art. So I was like, I got, I got this, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to like, take everything, you know, that I've experienced just from childhood till now, you know, um, and try to turn it into something. And when you do that, right, it's so personal. It's so deeply personal. It's intimate and yeah. vulnerable. And you don't know if you're crazy as hell. You don't, you don't know. You don't really know what anyone in the world will think of it. So as soon as Alice Walker wrote back to me, I was like, OK, this, this is something. <laughs> this is a real book. This book can live in the world, you know, and help other young people everywhere. Um, that's my hope. And so, yeah, I didn't know in the beginning that it would, that people would understand it because it's so much sort of like this collage that you're making in your own head. And then when you give it to you, share it with others, like people, because people, I thought they would be like, what is this? This is, um, has, this is almost anarchy, 
Like these pieces are not necessarily connected. Right. They're just like random pieces of writing, but I think they are connected. And I think like, uh, yeah, once she wrote that and she was like, and so we had back and forth on email. It's been really amazing. Um, She's Damn. been one of, Alice Walker wrote The Color Purple, but also yeah. she wrote my favorite book from childhood, um, from, from college, sorry, um, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, Womanist Prose. And so like that book had such a huge impact on me. And so to now be in conversation with one of your heroes, you know, it's like wild. So what, you're like BFS with Alice Walker now? Well, not BFS. I, <laughs> I wish she's like, oh, it's just, she's like, she's, I just want to, I don't know, hang out with her and cook for her or something. Right, yeah. I wanna, I, but we've been talking about food. So <laughs> I was just telling her about various things that, you know, that we should cook together once we get together, because that's the plan, you know? Julian, was this a, was this a, like a, a start to finish process when you just had that idea, I want to do a book? Did you just start from scratch and how long did it take? Or did you have some existing pieces uh, from yeah. before that you threw in? I had some ex existing pieces. The the piece that Bree you just talked about, the uh, fighting words, it's the 2018 commencement. I used that. So I used a, about four old pieces, I think, roughly. I can't remember. I think around four or five pieces, and I recalibrated them. I kind of like redid them. I added footnotes. And by the way, I don't mean footnotes in a sort of boring academic sense of like what footnotes can be. Yeah. I tried to use footnotes in very intimate ways. I mean, the whole book is structured that way. Like I tried to do this thing in my mind where I could eliminate all the distance between the writer and the reader so that we could be in it together. You know, so the book is really an invitation. It's like a, an, an opening of a door. And I'm trying to invite the readers in because and it's not about my life. It's really not. Like I'm using my life to try to communicate some ideas I have about human beings and how we relate to each other and how we could build a better world together if we were just a little bit more honest, had a little bit more integrity, had a little bit more truthfulness with each other, you know? But it's really about you. It's about all of you, the readers, to come in and do it and look at your own life. I mean, that's, I think, that's what I tried to do, if that makes sense, so you know? Umi, like uh, this, go ahead. Yeah, Bri. I was gonna ask Victoria, like like Julian said, you know, he, he opened the door, you walked in, you looked at the book, where did you go? Where did it take you? Mm. Oh gosh, everywhere. Um, I, you know, I've had the honor of knowing Julian since we were both really young writers at PDN's Vibe. That's where we met. <laughs> and so I feel like we've been on an interesting journey together um, where our lives intersect at these really uh, unique points. So like another time we were both in college and we went to protest uh, Fort Be at Fort Benning, the School of the Americas, where they train like Latin America's Latin American soldiers to kill each other. And so there I am and like Julian singing on a stage and like, I'm like, oh my God, there's another person from Guam. So we have all these intersections in our lives at really key moments that I think were pivotal for us. And so to receive his book in the middle of COVID and to see, you know, especially uh, Dugu means yoke, particularly the same way that he felt there is a book here. As soon as I read that piece, I felt the electricity of it. And I said, this, we need this book. And I really, really uh, hope that he'll work with us uh, to bring it to life because, um, you know, I really got Fugu reading that piece. I, right. I felt yeah. it and I felt it at a moment where I think people want to feel connected. Um, and so I think what he said is really is really true. Um, it does have a lot of rage, but it has a lot of love. And I think that even in those points where we are forced, we need to feel angry about the things that have happened to us, but we need to love each other through it. And I think this book gives you um, not just his own experiences, but also other books that he's read that have helped get him through. So I think for young readers, it's almost like, it gives you so much more, right? It gives, he gives you his soul, he gives you his heart, but he also gives you um, the books that have become his best friends so that you never feel lonely on the journey. And that's kind of, for me, just working with him um, has been the most exciting thing is imagining what this will do for others. Right, and yeah, I mean, uh, Julian, when you talk about what it'll do for others, I mean, it's no secret and, you know, I, <laughs> you're like activist royalty, right? So, so many uh, people in the activist uh, community, um, and I see you shaking your head, but it is what it is, right? I mean, uh, a lot of young people look up to you for um, just the struggles you fought with decolonization, um, uh, just with the military buildup. So when, when you kind of carry your personal life. Yeah, in your personal life, when you kind of carry that around, is there any like pressure at all you feel that if I put something out, it's just gotta be like a total mic drop? 
no, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, it depends. You know, I feel kind of differently when it comes to my legal work. I'm just like, yep, get back. You know, I'm just like very much like focused, you know, in a way that I feel like I'm trying to have the cold precision of an assassin's bullet, you know? But when I'm writing, it's different. It's hella different. It's like personal and warm and I'm trying to build a fire, you know, to warm as many bodies as possible, you know? So it's different and it's very loving and it's very, but I, but I think the thing that's, yeah, a, a little little interesting is that I don't know, like for me, you know, I consider myself a writer first and foremost, a person who uses language, you know, really thoughtfully. That's what I think writer does. But honestly, I never have time to write. I'm a full-time lawyer. I have a law practice, you know, I take on big cases. We take on huge extractive industries in Melanesia, um, like deep sea mining, self-determination here. We work with West Papua. You know, they have a national liberation movement ongoing. We try to Basically, we're doing all this, and it's super busy. And like, I can't even ever get the time. So 2020 was very, almost like the universe conspired in this weird way in my own tiny personal life. Because I finally had some peace and quiet and some distance from everyone else. And I think I couldn't have written this book, you know, with everyone else's, you know, you know noise in my ear. Like this book was really different. It's very, it's very, very personal. So I had to get really quiet and I was able to do it. I think in part because of the, all that distance. You know, all, we were all, you know, isolated. But yeah, I tried to, yeah, I don't feel that much pressure with this. I think this is different. I feel a lot more pressure with the law. Right. Does that make sense? Man, uh, Victoria, my, my WhatsApp's blowing up. People are, and you know, you told me not to share the digital copy with anyone. So I'm sorry, Sabrina. Um, but I did just send it to Sabrina. But she is literally the only other. I didn't even send it to my daughter, so wait, there you wait, go. Wait, wait, Julian, you're, you're not a copyright lawyer, are you, Julian? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Right. Plausible deniability for Mr. Barnett. Right. No, but Victoria, people are, are hitting me up on WhatsApp, and they're like, how do we get a copy? How do we get a copy? So let's just get to there. How do we get a copy, and when? Sure. So the book officially launches on March 29th. Um, but before then, we are taking pre-orders, so local pre-orders with the pickup option. Um, if you just go to our, our website, it's uog.edu backslash uog press. Um, and then, you know, there's lots of promotion for the book on the home page. Um, but we've also set up a landing page uh, with the help of PDN, actually. It's um, php.guampdn.com backslash uog hyphen press black backslash pre hyphen order i know that's a mouthful so honestly <laughs> go to our website uog.edu backslash uog press julian also has a website it's just simply julianuggin.com and it's very clear it says for guam orders pre-order here and it'll take you immediately to that landing page as well. For off-island and international orders, uh, we're working with a book distributor, Itasca Books. Um, so if you go to Itasca Books, um, they've also got it on Amazon. Um, it'll be available in all major booksellers across uh, the country. So it's already available through Barnes & Noble, for example. Um, but for local orders, please order with us at UOG Press. Uh, when you get to the pre-order page, you'll pay through PayPal. Um, and it'll say $8 shipping, but if you actually click on the link, it gives you a pickup option that's free. So, um, and we'll immediately send a confirmation email with instructions on how to pick it up. Um, but of course, uh, we're about six weeks out until the launch. So, you know, we'll be promoting it again around the time of the launch. Once the book launches, it will be available in all local bookstores. Um, our UOG Triton bookstore and through UOG Press, um, and of course, all these places online. Right. So um, lots of options to order it. And um, we are doing, we're planning to do an actual televised launch and live launch on the evening of March 29th uh, with PBS Guam at uh, 7 p.m. And then Julian is already kind of doing a, a, a book tour, so to speak. He's been asked to speak at American University uh, tomorrow. Nice. Uh, he's speaking with the Guam Library Association today, um, or the Guam Library Conference today. Uh, and Dr. Kreiss will be hosting in his presidential lecture series, 
uh, Julian on Thursday, March 4th at 6 p.m. So we'll be putting all of these announcements out on our website, um, on our social media pages. So if you just look for UOG Press on Facebook or right. Instagram, um, and julianuggin.com will regularly be updated with his uh, book tour schedule. Victoria, I don't want to take too much shine away from uh, Julian. I know he's going to read a piece coming up, but I just wanted to commend the UOG Press uh, and just everything at UOG, everything you guys have done to corral all these young voices. There are just so many. I mean, you go through any like uh, storyboard or any of the publications that UOG Press does. I mean, from uh, the legends, right? You guys got a great book on the legends in English and Chamorro. And uh, just being able to kind of collate all these young voices and their writing into just all the books that you guys have. I just wanted to commend you because I, I feel like... Um, that's a huge accomplishment because uh, it's important to document these voices. Uh, we don't really have a lot of documentation from back in the day, so just wanted to give you props on that. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys also for giving everybody voice on the air every morning. Me and my kids happily tune in. So. Oh, yeah, day. <laughs> All right, Julian. So yeah, we might need a bigger screen though uh, to for, for Julian because you know he's you know blown up. Nice. <laughs> yeah, day. Congratulations. <laughs> so what are you going to read for no, us? No, I want to quickly, oh, ahead, so Paul, I just want to quickly add yeah. on to that, Chris, because seriously, UOG Press has been, I mean, Lola's been a rock star. The whole process has been really empowering and uplifting and expedited. So she she's really worked so hard, her and her team um, at UOG Press. They've really been amazing to work with. And I encourage all these other writers, um, you know, to check them out. Right on. Okay, so uh, you're going to do a little... Sure. What? Yeah, I'll do one. I'll do just a, the, a, one of the shortest pieces in okay. the book. Okay. This is like a super short because I know, you know, your time is precious. But this is an important piece. It means a lot to me. Um, and it, it's sort of from that same era. I wrote a few of these pieces in, in some ways in a child's voice because they were sort of like me rec recalling or recollecting a moment in childhood. So, ready? <laughs> okay. This, this is the first time I've ever read from the book, so this is cool. Um, this piece is called Mugo. They say if you take the Mugo from a dog's eyes and rub it into your own, you can see the dead. They lied. I know because I tried. After dad died. Rubbed more Mugo in my eyes than I care to admit. And that's not the crazy thing. The crazy thing is I didn't have a dog. So I settled for strays chase those poor dogs all around the neighborhood because beggars can't be choosers. Because desperation, like belief, is a powerful thing. And because I was 10 and could not yet put two and two together. I somehow thought if I could see my dad, I could speak to him too, ask him all my questions. Do you like heaven? Are you and God friends? Do you miss us? Do you miss me? Do you still have a body? Is it chubby like before cancer or skinny like after? What's your favorite food? Mine is cheese. Is yours? Is that because Sokka, our family name on your side, means rat? What about Uggen? My teacher said Uggen refers to the family of tubers, as in taros and yams. Why is tuber such a weird word? And how are we related to taros and yams? How exactly? Can you help mom? All she does is walk around sad and cry in that scary way where she shakes, but don't make no sound. Also, she faints a lot. Also, can you help Rhea? She don't talk no more. She don't laugh. It's too quiet in the house. Can you come back and make it noisy again? I chased those poor dogs for nothing. I never saw him, never got to ask him all my questions. The medical term for mugo is room, a fancy word for eye gunk, the crust that collects in the corners of our eyes sometimes after a good night's sleep. A natural part of healthy eye function, doctors say, nothing more. But then doctors don't know everything. Thank you. Beaver the dads. 
Uh, Julian, thank you. Victoria, thank you so much. Uh, we'll get you guys on again before the official launch, but the pre-order link, uh, we put it in the comments. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can scroll and, up. And, and, uh, and please, please do, Julian and Vicky, please do uh, make sure to check out our Facebook live stream because, Julian, you have so much support and praise and people just like so appreciative of your gift to really truly understand the human condition and to be able to articulate that people are you know yeah. giving you all sorts of hearts in the comments so please go in there and read some of them because yeah. uh, they're very very appreciative of your gift and just for the record there was just a little finagetti yeah. in my eye it wasn't it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't anything well, that... i will say you guys are the first to have a live reading from julian yes so we're very there you go. we're very happy that we were able to do this here and with you before he read to anywhere else thank so, you thank, thank you, you so much Thank, Thank you, Julian. You. Congratulations. That's the hey, Victoria. And again, like I, I give you my commitment that that advanced copy isn't going anywhere. I only sent it to Sabrina. <laughs> so it's if it not pops going up, anywhere. I know okay. what I'm doing uh, today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Well, enjoy it. We'll That's see the, you guys all right. soon. That's the, okay. That's the, Bye. Yes. Well. Oh, no, I can't wait to read it. That that, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> No, you know that is he that... doing an audiobook? <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I like the audiobook version. Yeah. No, you know that that also that really resonated with me too because right. having lost my father three years ago, like I said, I mean he he's got that ability to really tap into feelings that we all feel, but not everybody can really truly know how to express or even want to go there. Yeah. And you know, it kind of like took me back to like, man, if I could actually just have one more conversation with my dad. What would I say? How would I prepare? What would I ask? Or would I just like let it let it fly? I mean, so that I mean that's that's really really deep. I mean he's, yeah. he he has the gift, like I said. Yep, he does. And and uh, the way he wrote it from like a child's perspective, yeah, um, that was just so deep. Because uh, you know, a children, man, very simple. They don't use a lot of big words, but it's always profound in it in the simplicity of their thoughts and their. Uh, emotions like feelings. they say from the mouths of babes speak flow words of wisdom there you go 832 let's keep it in the KUAM news uh, zoom room again that link to pre-order yes uh, is up there you guys can scroll up yeah, and uh, U- uog.edu slash uog press jq right tough act to follow my friend yeah jq you got any poetry or 